Hey guys and girls, I'm Linksort123 and welcome to another video about Zelda. In today's video, we are going to talk about the next Zelda game that might be something really different than the other ones in this franchise. So, there's no doubt about I love Zelda and this whole franchise really just... It just gets me every time I'm playing this game and with the new newest one in the series here, Breath of Breath of the Wild, sorry. I'm really amazed by this title, man, because Breath of the Wild has so many things you can do in it. Basically, there is no limits. And that's basically the end of the line of games, because if you can do everything in the game, how can you build another one? Because everything is done in this one. You got a motorbike, you got a horse, you got huge temples and dungeons, and you got a huge overworld, and I could continue for hours here. But it doesn't matter, because in today's video, I'm going to round up everything we know about another Zelda game that might be in the production already now. So, back in 2017, we got Breath of the Wild early in this year and it was such a blast. People keep playing this and it still does today and it keeps being a big game because there is so many things to do. So people like to watch walkthroughs and what happens if you collect all of these and stuff like that. And it's really, it's pretty amazing because usually games nowadays really basically ends their f fame in like a half year or something. These big games, Grand Theft Auto, Zelda, Mario, is something else, but you know what I mean, right? So, Breath of the Wild is a huge game, and it was way different from other Zelda games, because when you start the game, you can basically run straight to Ganondorf and beat the game, and that's something really nice for speedrunners and stuff like that. Usually in other Zelda games, you need to complete dungeons or temples or something like that in order to open up to the final cutscene to Ganon's castle, for example. But in this one, you could just you could just run straight to him. Maybe he was pretty hard because you didn't have the right equipment, but you could actually manage to kill this guy. And I really like that feature because it doesn't lock the game into being this adventure title. It actually opens up so many things in the game, and that's really amazing. Well. Um, the story about Zelda goes around like after Skyward Sword was released back in 2011, I guess it was, uh, the production of Zelda Breath of the Wild was already beginning there. So it's really early Nintendo began working on this game and I'm pretty amazed by that because it took some years to complete this and it just... It really just shows up when you finally play this game, because it's so amazing. Damn. Well, Skyward Sword was a great game, but it was like the good old style with uh, temples you needed to complete in order to open up to the uh, final part of the game. Well, um, and those graphics in, for example, Skyward Sword was nothing new to the series, I guess, because we got like... We got the old Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask engine, which looks like real life, but it was an old game, so it couldn't be that good at the time. Well, then we got the uh, Wind Waker, which was much more cartoonish style and had a much more powerful engine, and it was actually a pretty tough engine. It was really powerful, but it was made to look like a, uh, a comic or the cell shading, if I can use that word. Well, um, then later on, uh, we got Twilight Princess, which was just a heavily modified version of the engine from the Wind Waker, and it basically seems pretty amazing and really weird to to say it, but it's actually the same engine, but it's just modified in a, in another way. So, uh, Twilight Princess really looks like uh, real life, I, I guess, at the time. It came out in 2006, and I, I really like those graphics, because it was a dark game, but the graphics in this game was really amazing. Um, it really felt like you was in, in Hyrule and, and stuff like that. And then we got uh, Skyward Sword, which, which basically got the same texture type of style that uh, the same one as uh, Breath of the Wild also got. 
in my opinion, it's uh, kind of the same. Well, this was, I guess it was the same engine used as um, as the one in Twilight Princess, just more modified than than it used to be. And then later on we got Zelda Breath of the Wild, which basically have the most powerful engine ever because it should run the whole game and the, the render distance was extremely high in this one and it looks really beautiful. Um, Breath of the Wild also got this kind of cell shading way to show textures around the whole map and it looks really nice. I, In my opinion it reminds me about Skyward Swords, how, how the game looks at least because they have this kind of same uh, real life slash cartoonish style and I really like that. Well. Um, the stories about the the other Zelda games have been really different from each other. We have been around everywhere. We have been on water, in the sky, on land many times. And we have even been in different... Um, we have different equipment in each game uh, based on something. For example, we got in Wind Waker, we got a boat that travels around whole Hy Hyrule Field. Or the the big sea thing because you're like, sailing around. No shit. Then we got Epona, the the basic horse of these of these games, and then we got actually in Phantom Hourglass we got a, a, another kind of boat with these wheels on the side. So it, it was the one that travels you around there. And in Spirit Tracks, it says itself, you got a fucking train. In Breath of the Wild, we also got a. A lot of horses, actually a lot of different horses, but we also got a DLC later after the release that shows us a bike. Yeah, that's right, a motorbike. That's amazing, man. And it was based on this she kind of, um, uh, what can I call it, the shrine texture thing. How can I explain it? Well, it was this kind of old um, Shika, uh stone thing used on the bike and it made it really well fitting for the game. So what could the next um, kind of style be used in in the next Zelda game? Well we got a lot of different uh, answers here and some of them might be true, some of them might not. Uh, before Breath of the Wild was released we got this um, small trailer from um, uh, from Nintendo that shows us uh, E3 video uh, based on the texture style from uh, Twilight Princess with Link fighting this giant spider in a church looking place and this v video went really rival because this seems to be the new Zelda game supposedly Breath of the Wild but it wasn't it was just a tech demo sadly but maybe this engine could actually be used once again in the next Zelda game because now they have used this comic kind of style really many times in Wind Waker, Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild and maybe it turns out to be a more realistic looking Zelda game next time. Maybe. It could be nice to have a Zelda game like Ocarina of Time that looks like real life but is not that dark as Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess. Well, in Breath of the Wild we got a kind of a girlish looking character, the main character of the whole game, which is Link, no doubt. But he looks like a, what can I call it, a transsexual and no sexual uh, kind of per person here and that's pretty weird because in the first trailer we actually didn't knew it was a girl or a man we was playing as in this game. So maybe in the next Zelda game we might be playing as a girl or maybe both, maybe Link and Princess Zelda. You never know. It could be pretty nice, like in Twilight Princess, you could play also as Midna. It would be a nice feature, right? Um, but that was just another, what can I call, another answer about how the next Zelda game could be. Well, the story is probably the easiest thing to say, because they can always made up a new Hyrule. We got Low Rule, we got Hyrule, we got a a uh, sea kind of looking uh, Hyrule from the Wind Waker and stuff so it changes from game to game but Hyrule with a different kind of uh, different spelled out is probably the main the main area here we also got Termina back in Majora's Mask but you never know the actual name of it well I guess water might not be the actual place to place the next Zelda game and not even in the sky because we also got Skyward Sword 
pr as a pretty new game too. So it might be something something next uh, level really because maybe it's going to be in the space or something because we got this motorbike in Breath of the Wild and it could actually turn out to be some kind of a more um, what can I call it? vehicle based Zelda game you could drive around in cars and motorbikes maybe uh, but I really don't hope so because it would be really sad to see uh, this franchise being ruined with kind of uh, vehicles and cars and, and stuff like that it's not Grand Theft Auto right well that that's also something that we need to to talk about because we got the engine, we got the the textures, we got the storyline, and then we also got how the game needs to be, what the game needs to be based on. And I guess it's not any any, any kind of sailing or a train or a bird that flies you around. It it might be more different than the other ones. It could be. It could be pretty nice to see a motorbike once again in the Zelda franchise. But it's also really different from from what we're used to with Zelda games, right? So, we never know, but we can only hope that the next Zelda game will be fucking awesome and look just as good as Breath of the Wild, maybe better, and be such a huge game as Breath of the Wild, maybe even bigger. But I guess Breath of the Wild is done pretty pretty well because in Skyrim, for example, it's a giant game and you never know where to start because where the fuck can I go, man? It, it seems like a gigantic place and it, it also is this main area. But seriously, this, this is a hard, fine kind of section here because you need to make a big world that feels like a small world because else fans might just get lost in this and then they drops the interest for this game so I can't really wait to see maybe next year what Nintendo Nintendo shows us about the next Zelda game because there is surely something in the works at Nintendo it's it's clear man maybe even a handheld console might be appearing uh, the next years and that means another Zelda game for for that too but uh, yeah, let's see what the future shows us and then we can just hope for the best because Nintendo never, never lets the fans down. At least with the, not with their games, but with the copyright laws, it really fucks us YouTubers up. If you didn't know that, make sure to write it in the comments, then I can explain that shit. So, I will just say thank you so much for watching, guys and girls. I hope you enjoyed a little kind of a different video, but uh, I just fell for doing this kind of stuff. I hope I see all of you guys and girls in the next video, because it's gonna be really awesome. So, make sure to stay tuned, make sure to throw a like after this video, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. And, yeah, the last thing, make sure to have a nice day and nice evening. Sleep well, and I see you next time. Bye!